Welcome to lecture 10th of, of this course uh, corrosion, environmental degradation and surface engineering. The title of 10th lecture is a surface degradation mechanism due to corrosion action. It is a second part because the ninth lecture also we covered on a corrosion action. And then what we realize um, in the previous lecture that even the materials everything is good, but if there is a some sort of impurity it will uh, increase the chances of corrosion. And this slide I am just repeating of the lecture ninth only. Uh, in this case uh, there are three figures A, uh, B and C. What we say that in case of A, uh, what we have done there is a copper sheet and on top of that there are some sort of flux of graphene. Now, in this uh, flux we are able to show some sort of a discontinuity or some sort of uh, uh, the passage which is available for the impurities or for the galvanic corrosion. So, grain boundaries has been shown in this case, misaligned uh, uh, so, the, the graphene has been shown adsorbed uh, on the water molecule or uh, oxygen can be shown on here. There are some sort of vacancies. So, and moreover there are wrinkles also. Any of this kind of a discontinuity or, or maybe say that the some effect which can be brought by the discontinuity then it will increase the uh, uh, corrosion rate. And that has been shown here uh, in the figure A. Uh, there are two sides we say the C and B and the B has been expanded and the shown in a zoom form or a magnetic form magnified form in, uh, in the B is the 1 micro scale uh, micron meter scale while in C also is a 1 micrometer scale. What has been shown in B is the edge corrosion of a copper while in this C it has been shown the patch wherever the graphene was residing or was uh, capped on the uh, top surface of the copper. So, if you bring some sort of impurity and that will give us some path for the electrolyte or for the conductant path that will create a corrosion and that is what we are saying it is a partial oxidation of copper uh, at the graphene uh, flux H that is what a figure has been shown B the H at the center which has been shown in over here that will give a partial oxidation of the copper. And then another point comes at the graphene where the, the moisture can be adsorbed, it will uh, give us some sort of a splitting of uh, the water and it will can give a H and OH bond and then the iron in there. So, this will create a more and more chances of corrosion and then uh, figure D to G also been shown and then last time we mentioned something like inversion of oxygen molecule and this is what we are going to repeat again we say then figure D to G. Uh, it is a complete oxidation process which has been demonstrated. In this case particularly the black dots or a sphere and white uh, sphere they are representing the carbon and uh, red color spheres they are presenting the oxygen. So, this is oxygen, this is oxygen and in this sub figure D it has been shown the inversion of oxygen that means uh, oxygen is reaching to the, uh, the atom obviously to the material and um, allowing uh, the, the iron oxide and this is copper oxide formation. So, what we can say here the beginning with the graphene vacancies or some sort of impurities uh, there is a chances of airborne no water because there is a humidity in the environment or oxygen they, um, they get a can be absorbed or maybe they make a chemical bond with uh, the, the graphene and then they can be absorbed on the surface. Uh, what will happen as a result there will be a carbonyl group formation and the oxygen is able to come on the grains uh, that has been shown in the figure E and F. Then inversion of the oxygen atom has been shown as a uh, result of built up of oxygen atom this is the inversion has been shown out here and this allows to go ahead the oxidation of the copper and that is the oxygen as such is not available on upper surface but because of the through graphene is able to find the roots. So, this is what we have shown that because of the graphene or graphene impurities it is allowing uh, copper to uh, get oxidized or partially get oxidized and that we need to really uh, keep in mind. Many times we say the graphene is a very good lubricant, good conductivity and all, 
but it may lead to the corrosion also. Now, we are uh, in this topic we are going to give more emphasis on uh, galvanic series because we were discussing about the galvanic corrosion and it is mentioned very clearly in for the galvanic material. Uh, galvanic corrosion we require two materials and then uh, now those material need to have a some sort of uh, difference in their potential. So, that is what we are going to mention again here. The galvanic series is a list of the metal or alloys and those are ranked by their relative electrochemical nobility or a reverse of nobility is a reactivity. So, we can give a ranking of the material whether it is a very reactive or least reactive. If it is a least reactive then it is a normal material, if it is a very reactive then we will say that it is the most uh, reactive that means anodic material. And that has been shown here most reactive uh, anodic material is highest in this case we have kept a magnesium and then comes a zinc that means if there is a there are two metals zinc and magnesium, magnesium will be sacrificed there it will be the anodic material and zinc will act as a cathodic material. Now, instead of going with the magnesium and zinc, now if I make a pair of the zinc and aluminum, what will happen in this case? The aluminum will become a ca the, the, the cathodic and zinc will be anodic. So, in one situation zinc was acting as a cathode, in other situation zinc is acting as an anode. So, it depends on the, their relative uh, electrochemical nobility. So, this is a series now the cadmium uh, and then iron lead. In this case, what is the meaning of that? If we go with a pair of uh, iron and the lead, lead has a, a lesser uh, chemical activity compared to iron. So, I mean iron is going to get a corrosion uh, or uh, the galvanic corrosion compared to the lead. So, this is uh, in continuation uh, and then that is why the here the one uh, um, the, the example has been showed not on bolt connection. In this case, it has been shown that uh, the bolt is the base of the brass which has a copper container such another one is a mild steel which has a iron content in this. So, we are able to show that uh, this mild uh, steel nut uh, is going through the corrosion you are able to see the corrosion on a surface itself here. here. While uh, bolt is more or less clean it does not have it, it does act as a cathode and um, um, uh, nut acts as a anode. So, that has been shown that the cathode is a protected anode it undergoes a corrosion. So, we can do an, an, a, based on this series we can really uh, choose the right material for the right situation. And uh, one way to uh, demonstrate is something like this I, uh, we have just picked up from one of the reference and the reference uh, has been quoted over here. So, what is in this case the gold is the noble material then platinum the copper cobalt and then the, the lead tin iron chromium zinc aluminum. However, you are able to see the difference here. Here we have kept uh, zinc on a more reactive side compared to aluminum, while in this case we are keeping that uh, aluminum is a more reactive compared to zinc. And same thing in the lead also the lead and tin in this case we have kept a lead as a more reactive compared to tin, while in this case we have kept a lead as a less reactive compared to tin. So, this indicates very clearly that if there is a some sort of experiments to be done this relative ranking may differ to some extent not completely, but to some extent. What is the reason for that? Because the temperature pH can modify metal reactivity and change the ranking in a series. So, it depends on uh, which environment this kind of uh, ranking was done. If we, we go ahead without really looking at all the parameters then we may commit mistake. So, uh, in other word we can say clearly that uh, this ranking or uh, kind of uh, guidelines we should not immediately uh, come to the this or the, guy and then the, on the, the list and then we need to stick to that. Quite possible change in a scenario, change in pH value, change in temperature relative ranking may change to little, little, little bit and then we need to think which, which material will get corroded and based on that we will choose the right material. Now, what is the uh, overall in this indication comes so more reactive metal tend to co uh, corrode when the two metals from a series come into contact and, galv and galvanic corrosion process initiated. And another thing is that galvanic process and the process which is initiated uh, initially it will not show very high wear rate or will have a removal of the material or it will not show the very high corrosion, but at the progress, uh, the process progress 
more and more cathode formation occurs uh, and then the lesser and lesser uh, remaining uh, anode and as anode remains then this process will accelerate it like anything. So, initially all the corrosion process are slow, but they really move uh, the, the, the non linear and then towards end it may become a very fast failures. So, we need to keep that in a mind very clearly that this is a important aspects to look at. Now, I am trying to show a comparison of the two uh, galvanic series. One, uh, the one literature say this is a quantitative analysis which they have done on experimental basis. Other one is a Nuss equation based that is a qualitative analysis, a modeling based. And then you can see the ranking here. here in the experimental, they found a gold is uh, more noble compared to platinum. While in case of the Nuss equation, they found that platinum is a more noble compared to the gold. So, if a situation changes or the assumption changes or maybe you know, the medium change or temperature change, then there is a some sort of a change in the relative ranking and that is possible. And same thing has been shown in this case also uh, aluminum uh, versus a zinc. In this case aluminum is uh, going on more on the noble side compared to zinc, while in this case the zinc is on a more noble side compared to aluminum. So, we, we cannot go as it is so what has been uh, published. We can take a guideline from this and of course, if there is an asked equation is there, we can go ahead with the solution of the equation and we can figure out the what will be the uh, relative ranking. However, we are not going in detail about that equation and how do we solve the equation. The, the, this is a separate uh, subject uh, corrosion and we can discuss on those things. However, in the present uh, uh, course, we are not discussing that kind of theoretical model. Now, coming to the um, what we have covered earlier uniform corrosion, then we say galvanized corrosion. Now, we are coming to the third category that is called a, a localized corrosion. And in my previous uh, lecture, I mentioned very clearly uh, in some uh, references, it has been mentioned the localized corrosion as a one category, but uh, in the present uh, course, we want to divide this localized cor corrosion in two separate categories. And then what we want to say, it is a pitting corrosion and crevice, uh, and the crevice corrosion, there are two separate categories, pitting corrosion and crevice uh, corrosion, we want to keep two separate categories. Why we want to do that? That is what I want to give explanation. We say the pitting corrosion means creation of small localized pits. So, how it is different from a uniform uh, pit? Because in uniform pit uh, and the uniform uh, corrosion complete surface gets uh, corroded. While in this case only the localized pits are getting corrosion. Maybe some surface has a some scratch, some uh, sort of a mark that only surface that, that portion is only getting the corroded remaining surface is not getting corroded. So, that is what has been shown the localized pit by corrosion action on a metal surface why it happens because pits are frequently small compared to whole surface, yet they have a, a potential to penetrate deeply is another thing uh, smaller size on the top, but it can go vertically down and we already have a covered something like uh, intragranular. Uh, corrosion IGC which was a much more uh, harmful severe compared to the uniform corrosion. So, we need to uh, think from a, a, a localized uh, corrosion which is basically a pitting corrosion which is becomes a more important compared to the uniform corrosion because uniform corrosion is a very easily visible and then when the pit uh, pitting corrosion will not be so easily visible till it grows to the substantial size or becomes a visible to us. So, what we say that uh, this can cause a substantial harm if uh, goes uh, the this pit goes uh, deeper and deeper and then uh, we will not be able to see the depth and then there is a possibility of uh, sudden failure or kind of the big brittle failure. So, that we want to avoid. We say pitting corrosion is caused by local uh, chemical or electrochemical process. Um, and then the, the it can be chemical like oxidation and all with company happening or maybe electrolytes are there then electrochemical process. And then uh, major thing is that because of the pit formation and then inside the pit surface will act as an anode and around the surface on the pit will act as a, a cathode as such. So, there is a difference on the same surface if there is a pit it will become say anode 
and uh, outer surface will act as a cathode. So, there is a big difference coming and then because here the cathode size is big, anode size is very very small naturally the rate of corrosion will be very high that was also covered in uh, my previous lecture that if the anode size compared to the inner cathode size is much smaller natural rate of, uh, rate of corrosion will be very high and same thing we are mentioning here in pitting corrosion anode size is very very small compared to the cathode side that is why the rate of corrosion will be very high. Now, pitting corrosion is more aggressive quicker than uniform corrosion that is what I mentioned that uniform corrosion one is as a spread easily and then visible, but it will not go vertically down uh, may be in the few micron layer will be sufficient while in the case uh, of the pitting corrosion it will not show from a pit size that harmful that pit is, but uh, vertically down and it has gone through the number of uh, grains or uh, the grain boundaries it will really make a very big size pit and maybe the, uh, the, the severe uh, situation may arise. Uh, without really giving sufficient notification. We can say it is difficult to detect in early stage. So, that is why the when, he, uh, when the pitting is pitting is started, uh, then it is very difficult to diagnose also. While uh, uniform, it is easier to diagnose compared to the pitting. So, what we can say the pit can grow from tin, uh, tiny pits to the enormous crater, the big size chunk, uh, the, the in one of the previous slide, uh, the lecture slide, I showed that the, the, the even uh, what a material which has been supposed to be corrosion resistant material, but it shows a big uh, crater at the end of the uh, process. Now, the crevice uh, corrosion uh, is uh, something like uh, uh, what we say that we need to we need to first define it. You say any uh, anywhere small gap somewhere or maybe the small crack which is not of uh, significant dimension maybe say even the, the, the maybe say even the 10 micron 15 micron that might be the sum sufficient as such and uh, this uh, small gap of fissure uh, between two surfaces and between or maybe a one metal surface and non metal surface we have seen in number of times in uh, in, in the case of uh, and then the gasket and then there is a rubber gasket and is still the this kind of corrosion occurs there. So, crevice uh, can trap the corrosion uh, substance may be the kind of electrolyte can be really captured in that kind of small gap and then remain in the stationary condition for a long time. What will happen in the situation? It will uh, create a kind of a localized environment for the corrosion and it will promote the corrosion. Now, this uh, electrolyte or may be the uh, corrosion media can be water can be I mean that is what we mentioned uh, water or uh, chemicals it can be some sort of acid or some sort of salt and that is uh, going sufficient to uh, initiate the uh, this kind of corrosion. And another important thing is that what we mentioned earlier that there is a passive layer in corrosion there will be a passive layer which will prevent further uh, degradation of the surface. Well, in this case because there will not be flow of oxygen, oxygen will not be able to reach to the surface naturally the passivation will not be possible at all. If passivation is not possible and then the concentrated uh, case of the uh, localized uh, corrosion is there naturally there will be more and more uh, severe uh, corrosion in this case. And then that is why we see that even the concentration will change the corrosive media concentration will continuously increase because of the continuous uh, and then the ions are available and then that is giving a more and more uh, chances of uh, passage or maybe uh, giving a uh, possibility of uh, uh, electron exchange and uh, the current possibilities. So, the corrosion process is often enhanced in this uh, crevice uh, areas and that we say the, and the corrosion in crevices area can lead to creation of another one thing is that what we have say the pit, but quite possible in very small cracks is available it can start from uh, the crevice uh, corrosion and can lead to the pitting corrosion. So, because pitting corrosion um, and then there is uh, openly available to other we can see it. However, if you want to express in other word what is another word we can say crevice corrosion take place in a narrow gap uh, uh, where is a pitting corrosion take place on the exposed metal surface. The presence of stagnant or trapped corrosive chemicals or medium. Uh, within the crevice uh, often initiate the uh, crevice uh, corrosion. Uh, 
where is a pitting corrosion is initiated by local chemical or electrochemical uh, process on the metal surface. So, again and again I am saying that something like which is not visible, there is a some gap something which we are not able to see that creates a crevice uh, corrosion while in case of the pit we are able to see the some sort of surface and then it is happening only on surface not very deep in the surface. Now, because the crevice corrosion occurs in a buried region that is why I am using the word is a buried region invisible region to us. It can uh, be difficult to detect even pitting itself is a difficult compared to the uniform corrosion. Now, if I compare pitting corrosion and crevice corrosion, corrosion I say crevice corrosion is more difficult compared to the pitting corrosion and um, and the pitting corrosion is a more severe of course, because the crevice corrosion will make a pit and uh, finally, the pit is going to lead. So, pitting corrosion may be and uh, uh, will be becoming severe and harmful uh, reason in the crevice corrosion uh, will not be immediately it is a buried it is a hidden, but finally, it can going to come into the pit formation and then we will be able to see pit. However, if the pit is not handled properly then it will become a very uh, we say that the harmful or severe and then it will cause a more and more material to be removed and then immediately there will be a compromise on a structural integrity and that is why we do not want. So, again I say the crevice corrosion is initiation uh, it is a buried and then maybe the finally it will be visible as a pit corrosion because it may be a 50 micron chunk it can be maybe say 150 micron chunk but as a pit continuously will be there and of course, if pit and crevice corrosion are going to integrate it together like there is an inside some sort of deep crack and on the top pit is there both are working together then it will be more and more fatal. Now, let us start with the pitting corrosion now uh, uh, we say that uh, you, you, you can see here the surfaces these are the pitted uh, corrosions you can see the pipes which have a number of cracks now and then maybe a number of pits and this is a through and through deeper like this liquid will not remain there acid will not remain there and then it will cause a, even the fracture of the complete surface also. Now, what is the pitting corrosion we say is a small flaws on the metal surface in even can start with the scratches that means as I say initially in uh, this course we say the surface roughness plays a significant role you know if there is a surface and then there are some scratches on the surface it may also act as a uh, initiation or a starting point for the pitting corrosion. So, that is why we want to avoid this kind of thing and what has been mentioned the small flaws on the metal surface such as a scratch might serve as a site for corrosion to occur. So, it is can be initial point on uh, uh, the for the corrosion to start. Now, pitting uh, happens when there is a passivated uh, surface maybe so there as a, we discussed earlier some metals have uh, inhabit uh, inbuilt capabilities to make a one passivated layer which will be like a sacrificial layer, but it will remain uh, thin and for the longer time and then uh, it is going to provide a kind of a uh, support uh, to the surface so the further corrosion does not happen. Now, we are discussing same case, but we say that here there is a possibility some sort of some sort of failure of that uh, passivated uh, surface uh, film that is why the passivation uh, is there, but passivated surface coating may fail. Maybe again there is a some sort of a scratch on that or maybe uh, there is a some sort of a tension and the tension that the this uh, coating fills and it exposes a small patch. So, one small patch is sufficient to again start uh, this kind of corrosion and then if the if the, um, uh, the corrosive media is sufficient or maybe there is a formation of uh, cell then um, a passivation layer which was started as a initially the, the, the good uh, protective layer, but because of the some sort of a failure in a coating and then before it uh, really uh, refurbish uh, before it is self heal pitting is started and then in that case of the pitting when it is started then it cannot be self heat. So, this is the what we say there is a flaw there is a possibility there was a passivated film and then it broke and third very silent case we say if there is a passivated film, but it is also it is not a broken at all right. So, the situation is under our favor as such however, there is a possibility of pit creation there is a possibility and what is that possibility nucleation 
and how does the nucleation comes? It will be basically formation of the, uh, the iron that is uh, the weak, uh, the metal start creating some sort of vacancy and that is what has been mentioned here that is a nucleation and the once a nucleation is start some sort of and then, the, then subsequent process will be uh, the growth of it that is what we call as a propagation. So, if the initially firm is not broken it is completely covered still there is a chance that there is a possibility of the pit formation or uh, pit corrosion there. It may start with a nucleation and then if it is able to nucleate it may be sluggish process it may take many many hours. But once it the nucleation is started then it will go to the propagation and the once the propagation is started let us say the metal surface will appear to be unharmed initially uh, and the, the reason being what we call we call it at the time that as a induction period. There is an induction period that means initiate uh, the nucleation is happened and propagation is not sufficiently high it is not reached to a critical limit of a crack or a pit then and that, that is up to that level is fine. But once the induction period is over and then uh, uh, the amount of the time needed for the and this is a induction period is amount of the time needed for vacancies uh, in oxide layer to grow to critical size and this is what I am mentioning critical size can be a 50 micron can be a 5 micron can be 10 micron it depends on the situation naturally under tensile load the critical size will come down if the load is changing then critical size will be different. So, this is what uh, and, uh, the pit formation I say there is a possibility of a scratch there is a possibility of breakage of the passivated film there is a possibility of some sort of nucleation below uh, the passivated film there is a possibility and then we will be in the next slide we will be explaining that in detail. But once the pit formation starts we will find a more and more pits are coming immediately it is not taking that much time if the one uh, pit formation has taken something like a thousand hours not second pit formation will take another thousand hours quite possible it will be nearby that area and it can come at much lesser uh, time span. So, what we can say here on formation of pit on the surface uh, of course, this is a process which uh, we have a discuss in earlier lecture also we say this uh, when the pit formation is start and uh, comes then it becomes uh, anodic. The pit itself is anodic when there is a possibility of uh, electrolyte uh, sitting in uh, that pit itself and nearby metal surface serves as a cathode. That means, if there is a there is a some sort of surface here and then there is a pit formation happening here and there is a layer or maybe the electrolyte this will act as an anode and whole surface other surface will act as a cathode. And in this case we know that anode is much much smaller size compared to cathode the progress will increase at the much faster pace. So, that is why we say the rapid uh, corrosion inside the pit can substantially pro, uh, proceed. So, in this case quite possible once it is started it goes deeper, deeper and deeper as a possibility. So, inside pit can subsequently proceed to the depth and enlargement and then there is a possibility that it will also enlarge which can result in considerable uh, subsurface corrosion even if the pit surface aperture is relatively small. So, in this case I can draw another diagram is something like that in this case so something like this and then pit is started from here and it can go deeper and deeper and deeper aperture is smaller size, but at this dimension is much smaller bigger in this. So, this is going to be anode and this will be the cathode in this case top surface. Right. So, once pitting corrosion is start formation of tiny pits or the cavities of the metal surface start appearing and that has been shown in this diagram these are the same thing uh, and then, then the many many cavities are there and many many pits are there of course, if this is a pit and then I can say this is a complete cavity. Now, to elaborate this uh, and then the pitting corrosion on a more detail uh, we can take this a nucleation and a propagation as a two parts when you say that there is a some sort of oxide layer and I say this oxide layer is a protective layer as such. So, this is a protective layer right, but there is a possibility of a cationic uh, formation or diffusion and then that is a that is a where the metal is trying to uh, lose electron uh, and then uh, give it to the media. Uh, once it is started 
then there is a possibility of nuclear and uh, some sort of uh, vacancies is getting created and then that is what has been shown over here the vacancy has been created over here and this is a process and that is why I say the protein corrosion can happen when electrochemical potential or metal surface falls below a specific threshold. If, if uh, the metal which, uh, which we are using it is electrochemical potential falls below the specific threshold what is that specific threshold it depends on the different situation uh, and uh, in the R week sometime we say the pitting potential in the situation uh, then the metal cation diffusion will start from uh, oxide metal uh, interface to oxide outer surface that has been shown over here inside uh, surface to outside surface of the oxide. And then uh, when it happens the when the void grows to a critical size in the previous slide we mentioned it can be a few micron it can depends on the, on the size or on the condition critical size as a result of accumulation of vacancy oxide film collapse in a specific area. So, if there is a vacancy and it is a continuously increasing then there is a possibility of a cracking or maybe the failure of the oxide film itself and that will act as uh, uh, under the initiation for the crack formation and that has been shown uh, in a bigger way right way over here we have uh, removed the top surface and oxide we are able to show that the oxide is a broken something like that. So, enlarged void before pit formation has been shown over here. Now, this is in a better form has been shown and the pit formation has been shown in this. So, there is a nucleation there is a some sort of uh, uh, and the anionic uh, formation or uh, iron start formation starts uh, now in metal ion starts uh, forming and then uh, it is all there is a possibility of vacancies and that is creating this manner. Now, this is a bigger view uh, whether we are showing complete pitting corrosion we say pitting corrosion forms a cathodic uh, region on the soft surface. So, this whole surface uh, shown is a cathode surface while this is a pit which is an anode as such. So, pitting corrosion forms a cathodic uh, region on the top of the pit and anode region uh, uh, at the bottom. So, this is what they are showing however, in my view is this complete can act as an anode surface and then it start enlarging slowly on that. So, uh, in this case another uh, as I mentioned that oxygen will not be sufficient to make a protective layer in a lack of oxygen and, uh, and uh, more and more metal ions there and electrolytes are also there then that uh, this kind of corrosion process will be enhanced and there is a possibility of uh, increase in the size of the pit uh, as a time uh, passes or maybe the more and more uh, activity happens or uh, number of cycles are increasing. So, sometime uh, we can say that even uh, and, and, uh, this kind of loading happens in times of the when we are supplying AC current under the service of the AC current uh, there is a chances the pit size increase significantly. We are not covering that in this maybe at the lecture 11 we will try to cover one example on uh, the, the how the fluctuation in a current or the, when you are passing the operating something on a AC current base then how the pit formation has comes there. Now, uh, uh, crevice uh, corrosion uh, in my view is one of the most um, dangerous kind of uh, corrosion is a crevice corrosion reason being when you do a welding welding or to metal surfaces and then we will find some sort of the some sort of location where the welding does not happen at all or uh, there is a some sort of a hole it can be a through and through hole also it can be a blind hole also and that kind of gap is sufficient to create a uh, crevice uh, and, the, and the, this uh, corrosion there. So, crevice uh, corrosion uh, uh, are the tiny voids that form between the interacting metals to some metals which are interacting maybe because of the joining process here we are using the word joining it can be welding it can be riveting it can be cascading it can be threading or some sort of a manufacturing and manufacturing also we uh, try to give some sort of a coating on the surface or some sort of a plating on the surface even in this situation even there is a some sort of a gap that will act as a, uh, then the crevice uh, gap and then the, there is a possibility of the crevice corrosion there. So, uh, this uh, corrosion occurs when the metal surface is exposed to the corrosive environment and concentration of the corrosion substance within the crevice uh, differs 
compared to the surrounding and we have found in, uh, in this because there is a stationary or a stagnation this concentration continuously increases. Thus, this difference in the concentration causes the accelerated corrosion. So, outside surfaces will not be getting corrosion and then maybe as a previous lecture and then the slide we mentioned in the pit uh, if there is a some sort of uh, the gap the and then the, this electrolyte in this uh, remaining there. So, and the con concentration of electrolyte will continuously change uh, um, and then it will be a more like a metal ions also will be there. So, and it is not moving at all. So, in this case uh, concentration will continuously change and then there will be a possibility of accelerated corrosion in that uh, region as such. So, uh, we can see uh, the difference in concentration causes the accelerated corrosion because it produces an electrochemical uh, cell. So, I can say this is electrochemical cell this is acting as an anode this acting as a cathode. So, electrochemical cell it is acting as an electrochemical cell as such and that too uh, within a fissure or within a crack or deep crack itself. A reduction process uh, occurs at the cathode that is what I have been mentioned on the top of surface which matches a metal exterior uh, bulk in this example. So, outside surface uh, in this case and this complete can act as a cathode and this small hole and then deeper inside can act as an anode. This uh, difference in electrochemical act, uh, activity causes a passage of electron ion within the crack which promotes a corrosion that has been mentioned over here. Now, one of the major issue is a uh, uh, difficult to detect in the small uh, we cannot put a sensor we cannot really find out so easily how the, the, the this kind of corrosion is progressing and uh, moving at the master of a much faster pace or accelerated. So, we require either indirect method or we require a non destructive testing methods to figure out what, what is really happening which may turn out to be the costly, but we are if we are able to choose uh, right uh, uh, materials and we are able to fill all the gaps perfectly and then there is no possibility of electrolyte and uh, going there or moisture going there or acid going there and staying or becoming stagnant there then chances will come down significantly. Many times we fill those uh, the gaps with a uh, normal uh, the glues also and that also will help. However, uh, we need to take a right decision uh, then uh, and the, this kind of uh, failure can be avoided. Now, we can see uh, this uh, crevice corrosion is frequently difficult to detect and proceed quickly because the corrosion produces a concentrated uh, in a limited space worsening the condition for the corrosion itself. Accumulation of uh, chlorides that is what uh, we say there is some sort of a high uh, acidic in nature. So, some sort of a chloride or other uh, corrosive substance can uh, speed up the corrosion uh, process. Corrosion can eventually cause metal penetration perhaps a catastrophic failure there is a possibility however, as per our, uh, our knowledge uh, this crevice will turn out to be a pit formation. So, we will have a some sort of detection method we will be able to figure out what is going to happen there. So, to prevent uh, crevice corrosion careful design considerations are required such as a decreasing the geometry crevice geometry at such in a manner it should not happen we need to make a perfect joints uh, or maybe the perfect matching as such. So, that there should not be uh, this kind of uh, gaps and then there should not be crevice uh, remaining other than the formation of crevice holes or uh, geometry there at all. Then uh, we need to go ahead with eliminating all stagnant spots there should not be any liquid in uh, there or maybe the chemical there the staying at one location for a very long time. And finally, we say that we can use uh, corrosion resistant materials. If this is a kind of protection device we can think about the protective coating sealant and uh, corrosion inhibitors with the way which we have uh, discussed in previous lecture also. So, these are the physical uh, barriers which will stop chemical activities and the protective coat can, uh, coating is possible sealant possible and corrosion inhibitors also can be utilized particularly I have seen a corrosion inhibitors in uh, engine oils in uh, uh, the gear oils. Uh, been utilized the sealings uh, sealant has been used in the most of the seals 
because we know the seals are kind of uh, elastro plastic materials or is elastro uh, viscoelastic materials they will remain uh, in some shape for some time but after some time they may deform and then uh, there is a possibility of the air gap getting generated if you want to really seal that then the, the life can be extended now we will just uh, consider the one uh, case study uh, that is uh, related to crevice corrosion and then uh, we are referring the one paper uh, unfortunately in this paper they are using the super uh, stainless steel word and uh, super they have used s u p p e r i don't know whether the type error or they want to specialize this word as such uh, super so in this uh, particularly in the present lecture i'm going ahead with the s u p e r stainless steel i'm not going with the double p in this case right so super stainless steel material we are talking and what is that super stainless steel material is say it has a outstanding corrosion resistance why high outstanding it has a very high nickel percentage it has a very high chromium percentage it has a high molybdenum process so uh, all the three materials are uh, and then uh, abundant or maybe more than sufficient which is really are available in other stainless steel material you look at the molybdenum itself is a 4% now coming to the nickel which is 25% coming to chromium is 20% so all three elements are a very high uh, quantity and then that's why they are using the word it's a super stainless steel uh, surface the stainless steel itself is a corrosion resistant but this composition is a super uh, corrosion resistant material so we want to know we want to understand even we are making super corrosion resistant material will it get corroded at all so that's why the, the they wanted to perform experiment and then uh, there is a ASTM standards because uh, whenever you want to conduct any kind of a corrosion test you need to follow some sort of standards and then in the standards uh, they and these are the well established standards that we need to really work on uh, kind of the job they want what kind of work piece to be made and how it should the experiment should be conducted how many times the experiment should be conducted reason being theory we can drive some relation we can give a ranking or we can have a some understanding but parameter in actual case parameter may differ to some extent and then whatever we uh, take from one literature may not really give a right results right understanding to us so that's why in the, i'm just referring this paper and this is as i say the super stainless steel it should be a super uh, resistance to the all kind of a corrosion and we want to test it and then uh, as per the ASTM uh, G78 they, they have a made a special uh, testing for the crevice uh, forming assembly find out the corrosion resistance of crevice uh, uh, corrosion and then uh, they mention also how to go ahead with the assembly and then they have mentioned also 20 plateau to be made on a polyethylene material which has been shown over here this is a 7 mm and then uh, the slots are also been shown very clearly as such and then the, the, the angle of the plateau also has been shown this is a material which need to be uh, tested so this is a 30 by 30 by 6 mm that is a 6 mm uh, dimension and there is a some central hole because uh, this is 7 mm we want uh, some sort of platinum uh, bolt to be passed through and through this uh, uh, complete assembly and then uh, they also have shown uh, this uh, in the crevice formation at the uh, which is really required in a stainless steel specimen so and the complete assembly can be uh, integrated in this manner uh, and then there is a some sort of a copper wire and uh, as has been mentioned here this consisting of the metal specimen in this case stainless steel and inert spacer that form a crevice uh, there is a inert uh, in the space of polyethylene perhaps so that is what has been mentioned over here assembly is exposed to the corrosive environment for period of the time maybe in this case they have con conducted experiment for the 2 hours and uh, before the, the, the 30 minutes uh, to be capped in a uh, environment and the level of the crevices corrosion is to be uh, assessed only visually or uh, quantitatively. So if we are able to visually see that there is a some sort of a corrosion uh, and then we can detect immediately however this author also have used ACM to find out really what kind of corrosion and how many type of corrosions are happening uh, in the device or in the uh, specimen which they have tested. 
So, this is a complete setup which has been shown the assembly which we shown in previous slide has been shown in this manner. Electrolyte the, they have used electrolyte something like uh, uh, synthetic uh, or we say they were use our artificial sea water level and then the concentration they have increased to 2 times. So, that they can go ahead with uh, accelerated uh, wear test and uh, they have used uh, electrodes uh, for that complete purpose they have used another standard what we call ASTM uh, six, uh, G61. So, they are using 3 electrodes you can see electrode 1 uh, this is electrode 2 uh, in this case working electrode and then there is a third electrode also. So, 3 electrode uh, and uh, they have used uh, uh, this is a test cell uh, made of the stainless steel specimen assembly serves as a working electrode that has been shown here electrode 2. Then is a saturated calomel uh, electrode which is uh, acting over here in this case uh, sorry calomel is a reference that is a reference electrode is this one 3 and then uh, uh, platinum sheet is serving as a uh, electrode 1. So, 1, 2, 3 they are using 3 electrode dimension have been specified they keep uh, specif and then, then this for the 30 minutes in a fluid in a electrolyte with where which is uh, maybe they what they have used in this case the artificial sea water and they have go with a complete uh, cyclic uh, potential dynamometer polarization test as such operating temperature they keep as a 17 degree. So, this is all the working condition electrolyte uh, what kind of electrolyte uh, we should choose how it should be uh, an assembly should be made uh, whether it should be reactive non reactive and how they should be mixed together and then uh, how the wire connection should be made a complete procedure is laid down and then uh, this author have followed those and finally, results have been presented in this form. So, in this case uh, this is uh, what uh, they have shown uh, corrosion site uh, this is a complete A has been shown here and then they divided in 3 part one is a 3 this is a one uh, part which has been zoomed in this manner as I say they have also used uh, SEM this is a 200 micron and they, they, they have uh, done EDX of this also and then EDX indicates that uh, there is a some sort of a passive layer uh, passive layer is a kind of protective layer that means this is stainless steel material which they are using is really acting as a passive material is making the layer on the surface and that layer itself uh, contains something like a molybdenum 2.39, chromium 9.07 uh, and then uh, nickel also is coming something 9.39. So, this is a protective layer uh, to prevent the surface from a damage. So, this is uh, one portion they are able to see, but there are other portion what will they are they are using the word mildly affected section and then they are able to show this is a mildly affected uh, section also. Last one is a severely attacked and severely attack happens only when there is a some sort of change in dimension. If there is a change in dimension they are able to show that is a severely attacked uh, uh, attack the region and then, uh, and then uh, this, this, this portion is severely uh, attacked and that means even though we think about uh, super strain is a steel material if uh, uh, when we are keeping uh, some sort of a gap or some sort of irregularity or some sort of uh, uh, discontinuity then there is a possibility of the corrosion. So, it is not only material which is the important for corrosion resistance is the assembly also how assembly should be made how and the what kind of electrolyte and how what kind of concentration should be capped. So, this is all important for us to understand and consider and then uh, they take a proper care when we do the designing. So, that is why we say that in this case uh, tin oxide layer made of the elements including uh, oh sorry thin this is not a tin uh, this is a thin oxide layer thin oxide layer uh, made of the aluminum uh, element including iron uh, chromium molybdenum and nickel makes up cover structure that is what they are using the, the passive layer or cover structure as shown in the ADX as such. So, there is a one correction here instead of tin it is a thin uh, layer and then uh, this uh, reference has been shown in this gives a complete uh, description. Another thing which we uh, previously mentioned about that crevice uh, uh, corrosion will lead to the pit corrosion and that has been mentioned here the pit of the size uh, more than 50 micron formed in the crevice uh, corrosion increase the chance of pitting corrosion of the surface. So, it is a leading to the uh, pitting corrosion. So, it, it the, this is the hidden or uh, what is it the, um, the corrosion which was not visible 
finally it will come on the surface and we are able to see that uh, corrosion and then uh, it will act like a pitting corrosion and we need to take uh, appropriate care based on that. Now last uh, in a series because we have covered four type of corrosion as such. We started with the uniform corrosion, galvanic corrosion, then we say the two type of the local corrosion, one is a pitting corrosion, one is a crevice corrosion, last one is a stress uh, corrosion, stress cro uh, corrosion cracking and in short we say the SCC, so stress corrosion cracking it is a very common uh, uh, in all kind of mechanical systems. What is really required? It requires a material, it requires a corrosive environment and tensile stress. If any of this is a missing then corrosion will not happen, naturally the material will be essential, we need to keep it to the area, if we are able to prevent the corrosion environment or able to prevent the tensile loading then this kind of corrosion will not occur. However, even we keep uh, uh, we say the compressive stress, but it will be in one direction, in other direction it will lead to tensile stress. So indirectly uh, tensile stress will keep coming. Uh, because of the load, because of the temperature also and that is what we say uh, stress corrosion cracking happens when a material in this case can be a titanium alloy, steel, stainless steel, we are using the word stainless steel also again, is exposed to both tensile stress. Now this tensile stress can come because of the increased temperature, another one is a residual manufacturing, we do a manufacturing, we do assembly, there will be some sort of residual stresses. It can be compressive stress but more often it comes out to be the tensile stresses and then even we do assembly, we do fitting, naturally we try to fit in one way or another way but there will be some sort of residual stresses or we do a heat treatment process the way uh, in previous lecture we say that when we do a, a heat treatment then there will be possibilities of also some sort of stresses when you want to do a quenching naturally there will be uh, stresses remaining in the surface itself after quenching we do the tampering also still all the, um, the process will not be the, all the material will not get stress free. We really require that uh, in the treatment appropriately we need to consider those appropriately. So we will be considering one example in uh, the present lecture also. If we do not do annealing properly then there is a possibility of a stress and that will lead to a cause of the failure as such. So this is uh, what uh, we mentioned. So, stress is required, material is there and then corrosive media, corrosive media can be a saline water also, it can be acidic, it can be alkaline also. So any corrosive media and can in fact uh, even the corrosive gases, it will lead to the this kind of uh, failure what we call the SCC failure, stress corrosion cracking failure and uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, what we say that uh, this example has been elaborated shown in a manner the chain is completely broken, there is a complete failure of system something like that and then in maybe in a, the schematic manner we can show in this manner this is a, a under tension or uh, this is a tensile loading we know very well and then uh, the, there is a some sort of uh, crack formation and then wherever there are crack formation occurs it will act as an anode and nearby surface will act as a cathode because anode uh, when the, 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 this crack will be subjected to the uh, some sort of uh, uh, we say that uh, formation possibility of formation of ions uh, in this surface uh, nearby uh, and uh, in this case there will be some sort of uh, gap where the electrolyte can come and stay and increase the concentration compared to the other surfaces. So this is uh, maybe if there is a crack even the water can get ingress in that it will remain for the some time and it will make a kind of a cell there it will act as an anode and moreover you can see here the anode area is much much smaller than cathode area expansion will happen. Now if it is subject to tension then increase will be very significant. So this is important what we say the small surface defects of fissure uh, serves uh, as a nucleation of uh, this uh, stress corrosion uh, cracking if there is a some sort of uh, defect or there is some sort of crack in this case then there will be a possibility of uh, initiation of uh, SEC. Now uh, if I try to uh, express in my another word we say stress corrosion cracking is a phenomena in which a material fails of fracture when subjected to both tensile stress and corrosive condition at the same time. There is a need to understand material resistance to stress corrosion and cracking. 
then uh, test may be conducted on a specimen subjected to corrosive environment uh, while being uh, uh, subjected to the slow constant tensile stress or a strain rate or uh, this kind of uh, tests are possible uh, we can follow the system standards uh, and then and, and, uh, we can really prove whether the material is a right material it will be able to uh, give a kind of service life which is expected or not. By subjecting material to realistic condition on observing its behavior over the time, this uh, what kind of test which we want to conduct will assist in determining the material resistance to stress uh, corrosion cracking. So, this is important for us to understand uh, we follow the some sort of standards and then uh, as per my understanding uh, materials will be subjected to stresses uh, a kind of the residual stress or maybe some other stress and then one way or another way tensile stress will come it will increase uh, uh, what is the crack size and this will cause a uh, lead to the failure and then the because of the presence of a corrosion failure will be much much faster pace. So, let us uh, consider the one case studies on this we say the stress corrosion cracking uh, now here the, the we, are, we are trying to bring a high temperature also in boiling one that is a temperature is 155 degrees centigrade and kind of the media which we are using the magnesium, magnesium is a very weak uh, and uh, maybe say the novel side uh, it has a very high uh, chemical reactivity. So, this is a magnesium chloride solution it is basically corrosion environment of austenite stainless steel we know the austenite stainless steel with the only the one kind of the phase will be there, but uh, we wanted to test whether it this kind of material is going to be uh, full proof against the corrosion resistance or not. So, uh, what we are saying we are going to give emphasis on stress corrosion cracking, we are keeping a high temperature is a high 155 degree centigrade and the corrosion environment as a magnesium chloride solution uh, and then uh, we want to test stainless steel and that to form uh, the austenite uh, stainless steel form. Right. So, this is uh, what um, and, uh, we picked up that this also from a literature the Wu ETL paper uh, 2018 this paper and you can see here stainless steel here particularly the 20 uh, percent has been given something like uh, chromium. This is a 20 percent chromium and uh, 0 and 9 is uh, being given as a nickel. So, nickel and uh, chromium uh, they are very high, uh, the high resistant to the corrosion that is why we are using this kind of material. And now, uh, uh, this where we are using the word austenite stainless steel because it has a ferrite and a austenite and we know the ferrite can really prevent crack uh, growth. If there is a crack and then if you provide a some sort of ferrite structure or maybe the face then it will stop, it will put a barrier to the crack. So, it is a very good uh, material to reduce uh, uh, what is it, the cracking or uh, minimize the cracking and that is why we wanted to test this material uh, and that is why they say whatever the, 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 the properties of material whether they are really sustaining under uh, stress condition or particularly uh, tensile stress condition. So, uh, this kind of stainless steel material uh, uh, the way say the manufacturing process has been utilized uh, in this case electric arc and argon oxygen uh, decarburization melting uh, material under the furnace. So, that it does not get um, the easy oxygen and it should not get a uh, what we say the contaminated uh, material. And then this case particularly the whole thing has been done and then uh, uh, this uh, trend the solution treatment has been done at the 1180 degrees centigrade particularly for a duration of 8 hours. So, after doing this again they have may come up with a another treatment what is the treatment as such uh, uh, and then uh, they made a 3 sample A1, A2 and A3 and then uh, they got a material and then after that they have done the test also. So, they have used uh, complete ASTM standards or G36 and G36 uh, specify what should be A1, what should be A2, what should be A3 and this is uh, the standard they have followed. And then in this case uh, complete in all 3 cases uh, they have changed the feed rate that is a 60, uh, 90, 150 while spindle speed has been kept same 450 uh, rpm while uh, depth of the cut has been kept as a 0.1 uh, uh, mm. So, same thing and then uh, to uh, conduct the test and observe the crack at any uh, cross section they, uh, they use uh, epoxy uh, resin they embedded a specimen epoxy resin. And then uh, after doing this they follow the standard as per this one 
you say that, that they gra grounded they using the silicon carbide paper uh, which what we call uh, sometimes we say the amri paper kind of thing. So, silicon carbide paper they have done and the polish the surface and then they have used uh, 1.5 mm uh, diamond, uh, diamond uh, powder uh, for the test purpose. So, this is uh, what uh, they have followed. Uh, if I want to express in uh, other word, we say that, that they milled the specimen as per the standards and then uh, milled the specimen they have labeled as a A1, A2, A3 and then uh, they annealed the temperature and uh, the three different temperature. They wanted to really check what will happen uh, if we do only annealing up to 30, uh, 300 degree temperature. We do annealing at the 450 degree temperature and we do annealing at the 600 degree centigrade. Uh, and that the annealing temperature duration was around 3 hours and then uh, this specimen uh, were cool at the room temperature finally uh, that to also maintain in uh, furnace and in presence of uh, inert gas the argon gas as such to conduct the uh, SSC uh, test in this case uh, specimen were exposed to the boiling uh, magnesium chloride as we mentioned very clearly this is the corrosive media they kept a temperature of 155 degree and then uh, of course, like with accuracy of 1 degree centigrade and they did the experiment for the 2 hours and then uh, the crack density was determined by measuring the length of crack uh, in the specified area. So, this is the final figure which uh, they have shown over here. You can see a depth of cut uh, in the first case uh, uh, and then the, the 60 mm and 90 mm per minute and the another 150 uh, mm uh, per minute. And then this is a uh, A1 uh, is something like uh, as received, they, they receive the material as it is, they have not annealed. Uh, in this case, annealing has been done at 300 degree, 450 is a 60 degree, 600 degree, and uh, they have observed as uh, A1, A2, and A3, and all three specimen. Uh, and when the, what has been mentioned here is something like, uh, and then the feed rate was 60, 90, and uh, 150. Uh, so, as the feed rate is increasing, they, they, they found more and more cracks and we know that as the feed rate increases, the loading will increase indirectly. And then uh, as uh, they are going for a more and more temperature of annealing, the 600, 600, 600 and they find that the cracks are completely vanishing at a 600. So, they say that if you want to avoid uh, this kind of uh, and, uh, uh, what do we say the stress. Uh, what we say the stress corrosion cracking in the situation try to do annealing at a 600 degree centigrade that will cause a lesser number of cracks or almost a negligible crack irrespective of the kind of uh, and the feed rate uh, the, uh, the one, one feet uh, 50 meter per minute also we do not find uh, some uh, substantial crack in this case. So, the, that is why we say the crack morphology of the milled A1, A3 specimen. Uh, has been shown here, here. annealing uh, at the 300 degree centigrade was ineffective to prevent uh, any crack initiation or maybe causing any uh, this uh, crack initiation is dominating while keeping uh, annealing temperature the 600 degree centigrade it is uh, avoiding kind of the cracks. So, that is why they are mentioning it is not only the material the way the manufacturing process should happen. Earlier we say the way assembly should happen, we should not have a kind of a gaps, while in this case the manufacturing process is really giving a lot of, uh, uh, the, the, we are giving emphasis on manufacturing. So, we say in totality we need to uh, think about material, we need to think about the manufacturing, we need to think about assembly, all together only can prevent corrosion. It is not only single uh, thing material will prevent corrosion or assembly will prevent corrosion or manufacturing will prevent corrosion. We need to have perfect combination to uh, come up with the right solution or right parameters in this case. So, uh, in this case uh, we are closing the corrosion topic and, uh, and then the we will be covering uh, and the, the synergetic combination uh, of the degradation mechanism in lecture 11 and, uh, and the, the hope uh, we will be able to combine all uh, the degradation mechanism what we have learned in last 9 lectures and then uh, come up with a uh, uh, couple of case studies to uh, really explain this phenomena properly. Thank you for your attention.